Uh, so today we're doing user personas for Duranki. First step to do in, in my opinion, a, first, a good first step for design, even if you don't do it very in depth, is to do the persona. You kind of invent some people and then you kind of just say like, why would they be using it? So what you don't want to do here is come up with everybody. That's a mistake. So you might say like, let's start, let, well, let's just start. Like somebody just getting, somebody who's maybe making a transition into dev, let's call them Alice. So there's a, I'd say that's our middle person. Let's do one underneath her, Pete. Alice is like looking for a job. So now it becomes this really hard thing of like, I'm applying for jobs and they're throwing in there, you know, you need to know how to use Docker. And I've tried Docker and Docker scares me. I think maybe just one more. How about the practical person? This is basically me. Okay, so Breg here, developer. I think there's a couple of other pieces we can put in here. So let's start to put in like, if they'd pay or not, would they pay? to solve this problem. Probably Pete wouldn't pay to solve this problem. Alice, I think, would pay. So she's like, I don't know what a new Destiny course runs, but it's not free most of the time. She's totally willing to throw down 50 bucks, 100 bucks, willing to self-invest. Now me, or Breg here, Breg will pay lots of money to solve this problem if the solution is a predictable expense so okay let's let's kind of go back through here we have a person who's young and used to using GUI apps we have somebody who wants like the easiest way of doing this and we have somebody who wants like a thorough way of doing it this person they just you know they're just there if it looks shiny they'll probably try it out this person just wants something that looks easy to use and again this person wants something that like looks like it covers their use case you know like again what the big extraction from this is the extracted concepts it looks like it could be powerful. That's for Breg. <laughs> Breg. If anybody names their kid Breg, I will give you 50 bucks. $50. You gotta show me the birth certificate. The, the certificate, the birth certificate. <laughs> the birth. So now we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna go into actual UI development. Uh, this'll be a desktop app. So I guess we should make the decision right now. Like how, how, big, how big do we make the desktop app? What did that even do? Did this even give me any more things? No, it didn't. It was just like all the same options, but now you just have them in a different screen. Way to go, Illustrator. Yeah, let's figure it out. So we're gonna be developing for a screen. That screen could be any size. So something we're gonna stick in very early, we're gonna just reserve a block for an ad. Also, we're gonna, let's get a quick save in. All right, so I'm just gonna throw that in the corner there for now and say that's our ad unit. I think you're gonna have a like list here. I do have a writing tablet somewhere, but this is about all. We're, this is about as good as you're getting. So we're gonna get these things as sort of tabs that show us what these guys are doing, right? In a local environment, everything's in one box. Everything. Everything. So you would just have just that list of components and maybe some way to say like configure. So if we open up Badger, which is a project we built on stream that used this stuff. And this box file is able to turn on a local environment, but then it can also with the same box file, it understands how to put this up in the remote environment. So in the local, you just get a list of all these components. So you could see that they're turned on. So you could terminal into them. So you can see kind of how, why are these things up? That's weird that they're turned on. And then you can do things, I think, like Nanobox Tunnel. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting error. Oh, okay. So you can't even console into these local components. So let's work on just the local thing first. For a local project, what do we need to see? We also would want to say, I guess, like component lists. Okay, I think that that's good for the local project. The deployed project gets, it probably inherits a lot of those things, right? I think that's a good start. We can um, go through our UI sort of thing, but I feel like that's a decent start. We're not gonna design every single one of these pieces. We're just gonna come up with a design system to deal with it, you know, and then we'll just build into it more and more and more as we need it. But now we have a better idea. So really we need a top level global project that then has the local, and the deployed, segregated, or user scenario. So what other things are like, if we just do like a, a step back before we actually jump into this, like anything that makes sense to see. I don't think we're like we're missing anything, but I guess the question would be like, did they miss something? 
So just general color schemes. These are all lifted from NASA. <laughs> so these are all NASA color schemes. I kind of want to try this dark blue and I'm going to do a quick check uh, style guide. So the beautiful thing about government stuff <laughs> is that guess what? It's all public domain. Our tax dollars figured out these color schemes. That's really pretty though. Let's just see how big would that be on a screen? I think that we can work with this. I think it might be a little too wide though. I'm just gonna pull it back. So maybe yeah, setting that to 300 pixels would be good. I'm gonna lock it. So project name, we'll call it Badger. Or this is actually BDGR. We're gonna flip the font. We're gonna try one of these fonts. I've never used it before for UI. So we have code, which is for the editors and stuff like that. And then we have the sans. So I'm just gonna stick them up here. Can't sell it by itself. Okay. And it can be bundled and redistributed or sold with any software, provided that each copy has the copyright notice. Okay. So we'll just have to maintain it in the license file. If somebody wants to maintain that license file, I'd be very happy <laughs> like, as we find things. So we're just doing some things that break up the elements before we go and style them. So for a local, you would have that status indicator. We'll get some better colors later, but we're just gonna start jamming things in. So we need software language icons. Yeah, 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 we're looking for like this guy. And hopefully what this will, this will be inside of a pack or something, we just grab the whole thing. Yep. This is good enough for right now. Yeah, why not make those little nodes the same color? So it's like if it's online, right? People we'll say that this one's offline. We're gonna have to back all this stuff up because red, green colorblind is really, really 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 prevalent probably just a little we would just break that right so the line doesn't connect when it's offline let's get something that might tell us this is local and let's get something that might tell us that this is the deployed thing so we'll just break the line yo this is supposed to be snapping it is not snapping why aren't you snapping pal snap the pixel while drawing snap the pixel while moving and snap the pixel while scaling didn't do it <laughs> it was just the first chance it got it didn't do it yeah, that's, I mean, that works. I think like, right, like that's, they make it a little bit bigger and do that slash that, you know, to kind of make it like drive it home. For this guy, I think we can icon that sucker though. Why don't we just make our own icon? What am I doing? Going to get an icon, 10 pixel stall. That looks like a computer screen kind of, I guess. A little wide. Let's do the same thing now for AWS. Yeah, I can tell it says AWS. Good enough for now. Let's keep bringing these fonts down. See how low we can get them. Oh yeah, that's like, that's nice. Nice and crisp. And let me try to move these guys just a little bit more. We'll do like two pixels of space. Give us a little space for activities here. Right, like just some sort of break here that says like after this, everything's online. Uh, so is there some way to maybe like, how would we, there's a break here, right? That's the font we need. Yo man, you're getting crazy. <laughs> We're gonna add an emoji in front of that thing. Come on. Oh, dang it. It just, it just really isn't that legible, is it? I think it's gonna have to come over and do the alignment though. Yeah, okay. I think it does make sense though to, to differentiate this cloud deployment thing. Would it make sense to sort of have a tag that they would assign and say, this is a staging server versus this is a production server, right? When we launch stuff into staging, everything is on one box because we just sort of figure like it's staging. The point of staging is to make sure some of the things work and to make sure that other people can go beta test it or alpha test it, whatever. On production, yeah, you've got that complicated multi-component multi-instance approach. Okay, I like it, man. How are we gonna work? Let's figure out how we're gonna work this in. We can add some colors later, but I think that's the gist. It's getting pretty. We're getting that nice texture. Okay, so let's add another cloud deployment. So that's easy, right? We just change this to be that green. I think we'll go, we'll do it some other time, go and like tighten up all the, the colors and stuff like that. So the app name is Badger. So this is staging.badger. Maga app dot com. Okay, let's see if we can make these a little bit smaller. That's a little tight. Let me just bump it up one weight and see if it resolves. Why not drop the URLs and show them on the right after you click on them? Or I know I kind of click to go to them. Okay, I can see it. If we if we give you a way to hit them, do you need to know them? Probably not. Local staging and prod. And now we just need a little way to hit them. There's a universal sort of icon for that. It's not. It looks like that one but it's not that one, it's like that. It's an arrow going into a corner of a box. So I guess like a, just a quick question. If we had two things, would they just sort of look like, like this? Or would they just roll up and look more like this? I think I got an idea. 
So let's say this is rolled up. So same scenario, local and staging are turned on. Prod is not. Hmm, with the colored pounds. Let's try it. Okay, so we've got some indication. Can I maybe pull this back from bold? Go. Yeah, maybe. I wonder if we could even make it smaller when it's in a list. I don't see a problem with that. I think that's fine. Which one do we like more? Do we like this? Is this little guy okay? Okay, yeah. I'll push the little guy over to the side. I'm going to move him over too. I'll move him down to the bottom. And then we'll take small guy. Sort of show that it's some relationship to the next one. All right. So if you were if you were moving these or opening these up and sort of seeing them in the list, hmm, hmm. Hold on. We're not we're not done with these gradients yet. Do you think it makes sense to see like multiple pieces of that project expanded at once? Like even like you see it in Adobe, right? You see these interfaces right here. So we can we can focus on like what that is actually going to look like at some other point, right? But just the idea is that you'd have this sort of like toggle. You can wrap it up like that, or you can hit another button and it drops down. We'll start working this through. So we're going to have uh, all these different components, and this is going to be on again under one instance. So we need a way to show that it's under one instance. That might make a lot of sense to name it after whatever it is in AWS. So if we wanted to do stats because of the size, of the names and stuff like that, it might get tough. I don't hate it. So let's say you had a problem with your server, you're working on your server and it does this, which is something servers do. And then it goes back to the baseline. This happens a lot. This is probably not gonna look good, but what if, you know, it's just line charts and nothing else. Like higher up bad, Lower good. I know how to do this in code. I don't know how to do it in Illustrator. There's ways that I can do this like in my head. You can have a gauge that's like this. So you have a bad zone, you have a yellow zone, then you have a green zone. Like don't, if it's in here, don't worry about it, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, look how tiny that can be, right? And let's have one of those light up. Cause essentially you would just be showing every pulse. You know, I think that that really though, that one pixel one doesn't look bad to me. Thing on top of my mind would be like don't put it over here because it might run into namespace issues instead of one pixel how about a two by two yeah like let's make it easy to see the resolution on the graph has to be tight it's got to be like one pixel represents one data point we're gonna set the registration point or the reference point to the bottom so now they're gonna know to stick to the bottom then we go to object transform each and what we can do is we can actually scale these now and preview that and then do a random scaling of vertical. So we can say it can go as far down as nothing like that. Kapow. That looks awesome. <laughs> I don't know why. I think that looks right. Like I think that that's the way to do it. I might hate it later, but for now, I mean, okay. So what will this do? This will indicate to these guys what's going on. We have to work the other side of the problem now. So we'll go to something where there's multiple instances. So this is where it'll get interesting, right? If there's like everything is offline or if one thing is offline, you count the whole thing as offline, right? So you get that that's offline or broken. So let's do the same thing though with this guy. Yeah, maybe just push it down a little tiny bit, right? How can you, how could you still have the 45 angle and make it look that awesome? It almost makes it look like a ledge. It's kind of cool. So now we just have to do the next piece of this. So they all have to be like top level things. We need to show they're a little bit probably separated. So I wonder how we would just, I guess we could just show that they're linked. So we'd follow the indent pattern when it made sense. Now now we've got an indication like they're separate. This is a simple thing to set up, right? Just say like, if it has children, because these will just be like ULs in the background. And of course, if it's off, like probably this graph is gone too. Do maybe one more of these. Let's make a, like a, what do you call it? A, a PHP site or something. We'll call it yeah, Python. Just want to see. Not great. So we might want to just do our own icon set at some point. How did those manage to be two different colors? <laughs> huh. That's so weird. So that's the condensed version of this, right? So let's just try a little bit of scaling on the corners. I accidentally obliterated those. So kind of the way we're going to go through the UI is we're going to do these sort of expanded panel things like this first to kind of build the library of different ways to handle stuff. And then we're going to kind of go back and do a, just like a set of screens that are more realistic. I really should get an actual ad unit for this. That's not the worst thing. Let's just grab that. 
Oh, jeez. What are we going to do about this ad? <laughs> we want that in there. We don't want people to be like, this is the worst. Okay. So I think like, again, we've got the frame figured out. That's looking tight. I like the color scheme. Like, I think that it's a really nice bunch of colors to work with. So I guess we could throw in like the x's because i don't want to use basic electron frame for this just get them in there start start working with that in our minds we'll design and develop this for windows first and foremost but eventually uh we're gonna need to make it look good on, a, on the mac just a little gradient to cut that in i think helps out a little bit so i'm gonna cut it there i think we got about as much done as i think we could have gotten done we'll catch you guys later have a good night Thank you.